that's the administrator was was right there with with Evers, and and so it's the same as Ohio. What Evers said was we can't do in person voting, and so we're just going to extend the election. We're gonna we're gonna open things up so that we can have absentee voting for a longer period. We can get through this confusing moment, and we'll make it all work. It, the parallels to Dewine are to what Dewine did in Ohio are pretty pretty amazing. It's very very similar except for one difference. In Ohio, DeWine was a Republican governor with a Republican legislature and, frankly, a sympathetic state Supreme Court. Uh, in Wisconsin, uh, Evers is a Democratic governor uh, with a incredibly belligerent Republican legislative leadership. They have tried to undermine him at every point and a Supreme Court that is aligned with that leadership. And so what you need to understand, this is an important thing, is this isn't a simply Republican or Democrat, because DeWine's a Republican. Many Republican governors have, have delayed elections. This isn't conservative or liberal because there have been conservatives who delayed elections. This is win at any cost, spiteful, abusive hackery on the part of Republicans who think that if they, if they game this process, if they narrow this process, maybe they Supreme Court. Um, I wish I could. I wish I could see some lighter way of referring to it, but I can't. I I can't see anything. I, I cannot see any redemptive uh, choice that was made here. I think it was made entirely to thwart the governor's efforts to have a safe and fair election. You know, the the next question I was going to ask you um, was. How will Wisconsin respond to this? Because, you know, I, I just I remember I was out there for the protests uh, against Scott Walker when he was cutting things like badger care and uh, and 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 making uh, Wisconsin a right to work state. And then I remember when the recall uh, of Walker uh, failed uh, because people just didn't like the idea of the recall. They found it sort of impolite on some level. And I was going to ask, like, are, you know, how are Wisconsin voters responding to the idea that all these people are going to be that that it's going to spread the coronavirus or has a chance to or it's at the very least risking it? And then it occurs to me, it's like they've already got this that rigged. I mean, if they get the Supreme Court, if they get one more seat on the Supreme Court. They've already got the um, the, the, the place jerry rigged. You need at least, you know, 54 percent of the vote only gets you, um, you know, 60 gets you only, you know, uh, whatever it is, 42 um, elected representatives. You'd have to get 70 percent of the vote to win the state house, And they're just they just have locked it in in some way. And they just don't care, do they? I think it's I think you're speaking uh, to a lot of the reality. Let's let's first off, make it clear. We know how Wisconsin thinks about delaying the election. There was a terrific poll done by our top polling group, the Marquette University Law School poll, last week in which the uh, an overwhelming majority of Wisconsinites said, postpone the election. You know, move it. They, they basically said, do exactly what Evers did yesterday. So by a 54 to like 42 margin, uh, and that was even before things had reached their peak or started to move toward their peak, um, uh, they said delay. So the people of Wisconsin wanted this delay, delayed. The mayors of our major cities said, delay this. Um, I mean, th there's no doubt where sentiment is. But you are right, Sam. You were talking about, um, frankly, uh, a gerrymandering of the legislature and a host of other interventions, including a lot of big money uh, from the Koch brothers and others that has sought to make Wisconsin a historic swing state into a Republican state. Now, here's the interesting thing. In 2018, they had everything in play to reelect Scott Walker statewide. No, we lost you. And so, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, in 2018, I, I don't know where you lose me now. Uh, just they had everything in play to um, um, uh, reelect okay. Scott Walker. They had everything in play to reelect Scott Walker, uh, and yet Democrats won every single statewide race. They won for governor, lieutenant governor. Attorney General, Secretary of State, State Treasurer, and U.S. Senate. And so 
we know that the people of Wisconsin, at least we have good evidence. The question is how much they will lean and how much they may be influenced by what has happened. Clearly, the Republicans have done everything they can to gerrymander, to jerry-rig the elections of this state. Um, but what they have done this week, in fact, this last 24 hours, is so shocking, so jarring, um, that one would hope that people will remember. And I think that's a, that's a part of our duty in this time. Our first duty is to keep our stuff. Our second duty is to survive this economic crash uh, and to make sure that, that our communities do the same. Our third duty is to protect democracy and to make sure that our civic and democratic life survives so that when this is done, we can elect leaders who will, will care for us. Uh, but our fourth duty, I believe, related to that third one, is to take names, to remember who let us down, who exploited us in this time, and to hold them to account. And I can tell you, I, as a writer and a commentator, am going to do that. I am not going to forget what the state Supreme Court, what the U.S. Supreme Court, and what these legislators did. It is unconscionable to ask grandmothers on the north side of Milwaukee to get up before dawn and to get on a bus and to ride through the city for to wait in line for hours to cast a ballot amidst the pandemic. Uh, John, before I let you go, um, one thing that I've been uh, reading about has been, and this is a phenomenon that's not just happening in Milwaukee. It's happening in, um, it's happening in Louisiana, I believe. I, I think it's happening in Detroit. We obviously don't have a um, full set of data on, 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 these, uh, on, on this, but uh, ProPublica has a piece about early data that shows that almost half of Milwaukee's counties, almost a thousand cases, and 81% of its 27 deaths in account um, are uh, African Americans. And this is a population, the county, uh, the population is 26% black. Do you have a sense of what accounts for that? Yeah, uh, look, uh, there's a lot of things, and I'm not a public health expert, so I'll, I'll put that up front. But um, we have seen an underfunding of Milwaukee and of Milwaukee County in recent years by uh, the state, certainly during the Walker years. Uh, though, though Scott Walker, our former governor, was from Milwaukee County, he regularly attacked it and was uh, very, very critical of it. We have seen an underfunding of our health care system in Wisconsin that is extreme. It has has undermined elements of our healthcare system. This is a state where the Republicans refused um, to cooperate with the Affordable Care Act, uh, refused to you know, take the, the Medicare or Medicaid money that, that they could. Um, now the governor, our current governor, the Democratic governor, has done a lot in the last year to try and fill that void, but you had the better part of 10 years of underfunding and neglect. And I think that in combination with systemic racism um, and, you know, all of the issues that, that extend from that, especially in, in urban areas and especially in Milwaukee, um, uh, have created a situation where uh, something very horrific is happening. And that is that this disease is being concentrated in certain communities. The same thing is happening in Chicago, by the way, and in, and in some other cities. We don't know the full play out of it. But the fact of the matter is the evidence uh, that ProPublica and others. Hello. Um, and it also, frankly, it relates back to the issues that we're talking about, because um, if indeed we have a city, uh, Milwaukee, where you have a, a, a large number of African-Americans who have tested positive uh, and a large number, two large number who have already died, um, the idea that you would uh, reduce the number of polling places, people to move about um, at, at significant levels and wait in line for hours uh, is it's a particularly, particularly uh, awful yeah. choice made by our politicians at this time.
John Nichols, uh, I know you have a new article up, uh, an interview with uh, Bernie Sanders, specifically about the coronavirus. It's at The Nation magazine. I've yet to read it, but that's um, uh, literally on my list of things to do immediately after the show today. Um, Appreciate uh, your taking the time today and uh, hang in there and stay safe. I will do that. I hope you will do the same, and I hope all your listeners do the same as well. Thanks for focusing on these important issues. All right, John Nichols, uh, thanks so much. Appreciate it. All right, folks, we're going to head into the uh, fun half of the program, wherein uh, we will play some video, and uh, I don't know how fun it's going to be today. We'll try. Tomorrow on the program, uh, Michael Brooks will be here, and then uh, later in the uh, program, uh, Nomiki Konst will be here, Nomiki Konst. I'll get it down. Eventually, I'll figure that out. I could just say it like a knee jerk. Um, Appreciate your joining us. Glad we could uh, stream the whole way through. That uh, went well. Mission accomplished, Matt. Hell yeah. Crushing it. Still there. Yep. Crushing Um, it today. I had a little problem on my Skype machine, but I think I, I know what the issue was. I think uh, Milo was doing too many TikTok videos. Um, but we will, uh, we will endeavor to persevere. Uh, you can support this program by becoming a member at jointhemajorityreport.com. When you do, uh, you get extra content every day and you keep this show uh, chugging along through an era where I think uh, we're going to hit, you know, we're going to have some, some advertising issues. Um, we will be here, but uh, if you are in a position of, of supporting the show, now would be a good time uh, to do it. If you are someone who wants access to the content, but you don't have the financial means, send us an email at majorityreporters at gmail.com. Right, I want the show or something to that effect, and uh, we will get to you uh, as soon as possible. Also, uh, help us out. Sign up uh, and listen to the AM Quickie. It's free, completely free. You can go to amquickie.com or you can find it on your uh, podcast subscription service, seven minutes a day. Listen to it, enjoy it, gives you a sense of uh, what the big stories are of the day. And also, uh, justcoffee.coop, fair trade coffee to your chocolate. I have now moved into the full, I'm drinking a full pitcher of this during the show. I don't know if you uh, picked up on that, but um, that is, of course, the MR blend. I did get another bag. I got two five-pound bags that were shipped to me. I did get another bag, and no, it is not the WTF blend. I would never. My second favorite is Los Diosos. Um, And uh, fair trade, 10% off. If you use the coupon code MAJORITY, go order some uh, some of that coffee. uh, They're great to their producers. Um, They're a co-op. There, that's a like a quadruple win. So check that out. Um, tonight is Tuesday. Michael Brooks will be uh, streaming the Michael Brooks show. You can go to patreon.com slash TMBS or to youtube.com the Michael Brooks show to watch that tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern. Matt, do you have any idea who's going to be on? He's really good about communicating this stuff. Uh, also, uh, check out the Antifada. Jamie has um, got a, uh, a new one coming out this week, as well as her vampire podcast. Uh, you can check out the Antifada at patreon.com slash the Antifada. And, of course, Matt, Literary Hangover, you guys are going gangbusters over there. Yeah, we are. It's crazy. Uh, most recent episode about Afro Ben's 1689 play about Bacon's Rebellion. We talk about some of the uh, radical influences of the rebellion, such as the Levelers, who, when they delegated power, said it was a matter of convenient and that power still off- always resided in the people, uh, which I think is an interesting concept that maybe we should bring some more of that back. But uh, check that more uh, recent <laughs> It's getting much out. bigger yeah, these days. Patreon.com slash literary hangover. All right, folks, quick break. Fun half, number 646-257-39. Plugs and notices. Oh, right. Yes. Thank you, Brendan. Uh, folks, this is Plugs and Notices. We usually do this up front, but I think we're going to start doing it at the end of the show. 
And um, these are there are COVID nineteen plugs and notices for March. Se- excuse me, April seventh, two thousand twenty. Um, you can find these on YouTube. All-